and welcome to my latest video. In this video we're going to be continuing to paint the Elder Howling Banshee that you can see on the screen there and we're going to be focusing particularly on the power weapon so if you want to see how to paint the rest of the model then check out the previous video. So clearly you can see that the power weapon has been uh, given a, a coat of black and that's just to help uh, separate it out from the model because if you see on the previous video that some paint were spattered over onto it and things like that so if you just give it a quick coat of black it gives you a nice clean surface to work on. If we look at the uh, wet palette there in the top left you'll see that there's uh, quite a few uh, variations of green. Now if you want you can do even more and that will make your life a little bit easier. Um, it's mostly based on Cyberite Green which is a, a Games Workshop layer paint and all I've done is mixed it with varying amounts of black for the shading so if you uh, look in the top right hand corner that's the standard Cyberite Green colour then uh, to the left of that there's a small amount of black then below it more black continuing all the way to the bottom right where it's just pure Vallejo model colour black if you look on the four colours on the left hand side of the wet palette uh, those are again Cyberite Green but they're mixed with small amounts of uh, Vallejo Ice Yellow if you don't have ice yellow, you can use dawn yellow. You know, it'll give you a very close approximation. Then, obviously, in the top left, it's uh, just plain white. If you see the marks I'm starting to make on the the weapon, so this weapon is going to be kind of a non-metallic metal looking effect, but it's going to be green. So it's not really going to look metallic, but it's going to have that kind of uh, sort of shiny effect that you know people like to see for non-metallic effects. And what I've started doing is just kind of brushing in these random reflection marks. Now, you don't have to be too uh, pretty at this stage. You can just sort of kind of slap them on, really, because we're going to be going over them quite a bit with different layers. So if you make a mistake or anything, it's completely not a problem at this stage. In fact, you could probably turn uh, any mistakes that you make into interesting reflections as well. So don't get too hung up on any marks that you're making. One thing to pay attention to though is uh, the light placement so because these blades I think it's a, a Triskali I said that in the last video as well <laughs> I should probably check how you pronounce it but the uh, the blades coming out from the center uh, the light just hit them in specific ways now because I've painted the rest of the model with the uh, you know directional top-down lighting I will want the same kind of lighting effect to be on these blades that does mean that you can't paint each blade exactly the same way but it, the easy thing to do is just to hold it under a lamp and you'll see like how the light hits it. It won't give you the effect of if it was a metallic surface but because this is like an Eldar weapon, oh, Eldari, um, so it's basically alien technology, it, the, the actual surface doesn't matter too much. You can actually say you know the the black paint shine is giving you exactly the same light volumes as whatever the material is they're using for their weapons so you don't actually have to worry about uh, you know getting reference and things for it for this you can just use exactly whatever the the reflections show when you hold it under a lamp and when i say the reflections i just mean the kind of like the primary re reflection uh, and the, so the main because all these little extra lines that you see them painting on so you can see there's like a big block and then a thin line and things like that those are just random reflection points. They, they're not necessarily realistic, although they could be. It just gives you an indication that there are reflective elements hitting the surface. But the the curve, at kind of like near the top of the blade, this will be uh, indicated uh, by how the light is hitting it from your lamp. Uh, so it's important that that section, and you'll see as the video goes along, it'll, it'll become very clear that that section becomes brighter than all the other reflections on there. So you're going to be paint there's going to be multiple reflections. You can see already that I've painted all these different reflections on, but they are going to be brighter at that, you know, top of that curve section. It does mean as well that at the top of that curve section, so you've got some quite dark gaps in between the the light reflections that you've painted on. Don't worry too much about those, but you will be going over them but they'll still be visible that's the thing so it'll give you like a variation in the brightness of the uh, the reflections on there for the consistency of the paint i do like it a little bit thinner for doing this because that will allow me to paint over layers uh, you know on top of these reflections that i've painted and it allows the translucency of the paint to to work and that you can see you still see the paint that's underneath but it just becomes fainter 
So you can see here, I'm just painting straight over the top of it with one of the lighter colors. And you should see, hopefully, as it dries, that you'll still get a rough indication of these marks. This is why I said at the beginning, you know, don't worry too much about being careful or, or making anything look too pretty or, you know, spending a long time on it because it's just not worth it because you're going to be painting over it all. But having that base work there does really help for getting these sort of reflect reflective marks on there and making them look interesting. Uh, so for the consist consistency of the paint, uh, I say, I'll say roughly like two parts water to one part paint. Uh, you might find that you're, you work a little bit better with having the paint slightly thicker or even slightly thinner. If you want to go, go thinner than two parts water to one part paint, it becomes much more of a glaze. So just be aware that the thinner the paint, the more likely it is to pull when it touches the model. Uh, and if that's the case, and when you the paint touches the, the model from your brush, uh, if the paint kind of runs a bit, it means that you've got too much paint on the brush. So you, if you like, if you prefer to work with thinner paints, make sure that you run the brush off on some kitchen roll or something like that, just so that it doesn't, you don't get these big blobs of paint that quickly run into all the creases and things, because you're painting in the highlights. So the last thing you want is to get the paint to go into the creases and crevices and things because then you get like an inverse highlight uh, and it means uh, whereas I'm working from a black base because that allows me to leave these crevices dark that kind of also outlines things as well so it helps to uh, increase the contrast just helps with definition over all of what you're, you're looking at uh, so just be aware of that if you make your paints too thin uh, whereas looking at it in the case of if you prefer to work with slightly thicker paints and the benefit of the slightly slightly thicker paints is that you will get a, um, a much quicker opaque finish on you know on any surface. So you basically you you work quicker. And yeah, if you want to get something done, you know, like a whole army or whatever, then working with slightly thicker paints is probably the way to go. But the the problem is as well with the slightly thicker paints as you build up the layers, the you know multiple layers with thicker paint will very quickly become thick horrible looking paint whereas if you're using thinner layers then obviously you have a much smoother thinner surface it'll just look neater to some extent you can mitigate uh, bad texture build up from using too thick paint by using a varnish over the top because it kind of like hides the bumps on the surface it kind of you know it'll level them all out uh, because what happens the thing with the, the texture bumps when you have thick paint is uh, the light catches them so they become visible whereas if you put a, a varnish over the top uh, leveling the surface means that when the light hits it it's only ever going to hit the varnish which should have kind of evened out the surface so you will hide a lot of those issues but uh, just looking at what I'm doing now so unfortunately it's gone slightly out of focus but I think you can still see clearly enough for, uh, for what's going on so I've already moved all the way up now to the highlight color. So remember, these are the ones where it's side bright green mixed with ice yellow. Uh, and I already mentioned at the beginning of the video the number of mixtures that I have. Now, what you might find is, as you paint on your layers of highlights from these colors, is that it might still be too big of a jump in brightness uh, from one stage to another. Uh, and so that can make it harder to blend in. If you find that's the case, then all you do is you take the two colors where the jump is too big and just mix them together so you have another transition color there. Uh, and you can do that, you can keep on doing that. So you have, you can say like 10, 20 different transition colors uh, and then you'll be able to get a perfectly smooth transition just from layering. So you don't have to worry about anything like wet blending or you know anything like that. You can just do it using layering. But of course, if you're going to use that many layers for layering up, you know, for, for your highlights, then you really do have to keep the paints thin because obviously that's a lot of layers of paint that you'll be working with. Uh, to help with the blending process as well, you'll see that I'm every now and then I'll be doing some stippling. Uh, stippling is really nice in that uh, you don't, it doesn't require any special kind of technique. And all it means is that uh, the closer you put the dots together, the more opaque it is, the wider apart the dots are spaced, uh, you can see more of the background color beneath them, and it looks like it's more of a like a transition. Uh, 
If you keep your paints thinner as well, when you do the stippling, you'll also get the effect of the translucency of the paint, so the layer beneath will show through, which means that the dots as you make them, for your stippling, uh, become more kind of subtle. So if you do enough of those with very thin paint, it actually becomes kind of like almost a perfect transition anyway. And if you want to push it even further, you can then glaze on top of it as well. Uh, but just be aware that doing something like that uh, takes quite a long time. It's probably more something suited for competition style things or maybe the, the general of your army. You know, whereas if you want to get it done quicker, you know, thicker paints, not worrying so much about the blending, but just trying to keep it neat uh, will be the uh, the better way to go. You can see here as well, it's sudden, for some reason in the UK at the moment, it suddenly got very hot. I say very hot, that's relative to us. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, so I have to have a fan on now while I'm painting so I can get the fan blowing hot air in my face. Um, but what that does mean is because there's a lot of moving air now in the room that uh, it does dry my paints out a little bit quicker you know, because if you put moving air over a surface, it, like a, a wet surface, it evaporates quicker. Uh, so even with a wet palette, I do have to keep adding water to my paints just to keep them going. Uh, you can also sort of mitigate that a little bit if you... Uh, keep your wet palette in a fridge you know just keep the whole thing cool so you don't have to worry too much about um you know making sure the paints are, are drying out too much but uh, i can't be bothered with anything like that so <laughs> i just stick a fan on and uh, adapt to my paints as they dry out a little bit quicker uh, just make sure though if you are working in a, a hot environment that you have plenty of water in your wet palette because uh, one of the fastest things you'll find for your paint drying out is if you the water will also evaporate out of the the wet palette so uh, you know basically you start working on a slightly damp surface rather than uh, something that's got a good good amount of water saturation in which case your paints will dry out quicker as well so you can see i've made a, a fair bit of progress now on the blade uh, i think it's it's pretty straightforward what i'm doing is self-explanatory uh, it's just layering up you can see how the thinner paint has, with that layering, allow, allows the translucency of the paint to do a lot of the work. So it's just a case of being careful and working on top of the, the layers and slowly it, it all blends together. Uh, and you can also see now, I think more clearly, how that curve at the top of the blade has, you know, it becomes quite important in one, the shape of the blade, the uh, the direction lighting because now you can see that the light's coming down from the top as well and also just for making it look nice and interesting and high contrast so you've got parts of the blade that are quite dark and then it goes up to this nice shiny highlight color which will eventually i'll put a bit of white on there as well as a final highlight just to make it pop out nicely and also hopefully the <laughs> i'll get it in focus in a, a little while and you'll be able to see more clearly about what i'm doing You can see as well that uh, every now and then, especially some of the darker areas, so further down, where the, see, there's this little notch in the, the blade, uh, and it's got like little edges everywhere. If you pick out the edges in a brighter highlight color compared to the color next to it, it just helps to define the shapes a bit more as well. Uh, also, so sharp edges will catch the light naturally. So it's not that you're doing fake highlights to help define the shape. It is a natural thing that a hard edge will catch the light more than a, like a smoother curve. You can see here, I'm just picking out some of the reflections, putting little dots on them and things. Don't, whatever you do, just don't make all of the reflections the same brightness because then you'll lose the, uh, the high contrast curve highlight at the top it won't stand out as much that that's the part of the model that you want to, or the blade rather that you want to keep the brightest and the more highlights that you put on the blade further down the less bright this will actually seem in comparison if at any stage you find that the highlights that you've painted at the top part of the blade are still too strong in the uh like the transition between the different highlights is uh, too obvious, then, so I've already talked about how you can make diff uh, new transition colors, uh, you know, just mix the two colors uh, between the two highlights, then you can kind of work on that transition in between the two with the new mix 
and it'll help blend them together. But if you, you don't want to be bothered with doing that kind of thing, you can also take, uh, say, the highlight color, water it down into a glaze, so around about you know, five parts water to one part paint. I say that that's a very rough approximation. You will need to test it before you apply it. But that kind of thing anyway. And then very gently just glaze over it, like the whole area for the, the highlight. And it'll soften all of the transitions together. Just be a little bit careful doing that. Don't cover, like, don't go into anywhere near any of the dark sections. It's only for the highlight parts. But if you just glaze over the, the area, with, you know, water it down. You, you can do it for any of the colors, actually, turn them into glazes, uh, just to help you soften any transitions if you if you want. You can see here now that I've just gone up to the, uh, the final white highlight put these dots on you can see how much of a difference it makes having these little white dots it makes it it gives it kind of like a bling you can see it pushes the uh, the high contrast as well so everything stands out uh, just a, another warning as well with highlights so one of the things is if you over highlight I already mentioned uh, about you know having all the highlights the same but if you kind of do too many highlights and then too much shading what you'll actually find is that uh, you lose all the green it'll just look black and white because you've got so much highlight and so much shadow. Uh, if you do find that's happening, then just go back with the side bright green, again, turn that into a glaze and just kind of like glaze it into the mid section. So anywhere that's kind of in between uh, like a highlight and a shadow, it'll just add a little bit more green back into the, uh, you know, get a bit more color back in there. So here we can see where I've painted the, uh, the rest of the blade sections. Uh, one thing to note is that I've painted, like so I mentioned earlier, but you, you can't paint each blade the same way because they're all held at different angles. So if you see the blade that's a little bit further down to the right, uh, the highlight point is now near the stone in the middle of the blade, where it, or as opposed to the, uh, the main blade that I showed you how to paint, uh, the highlight's obviously at the top near the curve. Uh, and again, you can just check that when you hold it under your lamp, you'll see how the light hits it. So here I'm going to show you how to paint one of the tiny little gemstones on there. Again, I apologize, it's slightly out of focus. Uh, there's not a lot I can do about that. I can't go back and you know, just paint it again. Um, but you should be able to see close enough to get the, the idea. Uh, so this I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet uh, straight over the black. Now, normally I would go for something like Mephiston Red first, uh, but because it's such a small area, what you'll actually actually find is that you don't need such uh, you know that many transitions. It's just not worth it. You won't be able to see the transitions, uh, and this you know starting off with a bright red, it just means you'll be able to see a bright red straight away, uh, and just don't go too crazy with some of the highlights. You can see that. Kind of, I do it a slightly different way to uh, how Games Workshop does their. Uh, gemstones in that they have they start black at the top left and then they'll curve around and put all the color in the bottom right and then they put a, a white dot in the top left whereas with how I've done it uh, I've put kind of like a round circle of color in the top left so quite a big circle and then tried to get plenty of red all the way around uh, I've also used uh, wild rider red and uh, also for the final highlight is Fire Dragon Bright. Uh, and each successive layer of highlight, uh, you just go over a slightly smaller area. Uh, so that dot in the top left, it still becomes like a dot. So the, the Fire Dragon Bright dot there uh, is obviously smaller than the original Evil Sun Scarlet uh, dot that I put in to start with. Because remember, the Evil Sun Scarlet circle highlight was quite large. What this means is, though, is when you put these final dots on, actually the final dot that I put on there was from uh, some ice yellow. Obviously, there's still some on the wet palette. Just gives it, you know, pushes the contrast a bit. But what that means is that in that, like, shine point in the top left now, there's actually color around it. It's not just, like, an isolated white dot uh, in a, you know, surrounded by black. Uh, I think it makes it a bit more interesting, but you know, if you prefer doing it the Games Workshop way, uh, then that also creates like a nice shiny high contrast look to it as well. Uh, the only difference I would say as well is, uh, again, so if you look at the uh, three red gems that I painted there, the highlight points on them uh, all move based on the angle they're held at. So if you look at, again, the one to the right hand side, the highlight is now 
what would be the bottom of the gem but obviously it's rotated to the right now so it's still kind of in the top left which so you know it's, it's in the top left of how you look at it now but if you rotated it to the top section then that would be the bottom of the gem uh, and then again i'm just going to quickly show you how to do the uh, the blue gem in the middle of the uh, the triskali and this is again very it's just the same way actually uh, except uh, now i'm using sotec green I, I think I showed you how to do this in the first video as well, but it's a nice big gem on this one. So, you, I mean, you, you would have seen it more clearly if I got it more in focus. Um, but again, same process. So uh, in the top left hand corner, quite a big circle. Then I go all the way around the, uh, the circle gem. Uh, so what this does is it gives a bit of definition all the way around. It just means you can see it more clearly. And it also allows the color to still be visible on there because again what happens is once you add uh, quite a few highlights to it is that you're desaturating it you're hiding all the colors and what you end up with is something that looks black and white uh, so you really want to try and make sure that you get the colors visible in the gems uh, you can see here i've gone back with the sotec green so there's sotec green and sotec green and white and sotec green and more white <laughs> and um when you put the highlights down uh, if you find that it's gone a little bit too pale, you just go back with the uh, Sotec Green uh, and just blend it in a little bit at the edges so that you keep that colour in there. And again, going back in with the top left and then at the bottom right, a little bounce reflective light. Uh, and you can already see that it looks shiny. You know, it's working there, so all I'll need at the end will be a little white dot in the top top left. Uh, of course, I'm going to be <laughs> messing around with it, uh, we're doing things that don't need to be done. Uh, but, you know, just trying to blend in the, the highlights a little bit there. Nice thing about this uh, shot as well is you can see the rest of the model with some of the stippling and things. And you can see how uh, kind of, you can see the dots much more clearly and how more rough it kind of looks because uh, it's a fairly quick painting. It's still like a, you know, it's a kind of like general level, you know, something for, you, for the leader of your army. Uh, although I would point out this is very heavily zoomed in, so you wouldn't see these kind of, you know, this kind of roughness uh, if you were looking at it on the, you know, even just with your normal eyes, it, it wouldn't look that rough really. You can see there I put the white dot in and I pushed it a little bit too much into the center of the uh, the gem. Uh, so I just went back with some black. See in the, the top right hand side there, I've got still got black on the wet palette. Uh, it just allowed me just to knock it back look, a little tiny bit. Again, this is, so I've over painted this weapon. It doesn't need to be painted to, to this standard. Uh, you know, unless you may be going up to display level uh, but uh, again, it just gives you the idea of what you can do uh, if you want to spend a bit of time on the model. And there you go. So that's how to paint uh, Triskly and finally it's in focus. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the uh, the end of this video. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it from what you could make out from the uh, unfocused image. Uh, there will be more stuff coming very soon i'm already working on an orc uh, beast boss i think it is that games workshop have sent me uh, so that'll be up next for uh, youtube uh, and of course i have my patreon and website where you can see uh, more of the uh, the golden demon entries that i'm going to be painting i'm working specifically on bellacor at the moment uh, he's getting quite a lot of a uh, lot of texture work uh, which is quite interesting Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe and I'll see you again next time.